Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany. And if this is your first time stumbling across one of my videos, I usually focus on fashion, beauty, luxury, lifestyle, fragrances, and pretty much whatever else I feel like talking about. So if that seems like something that you may be interested in, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Also, if you're already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that notification bell. I don't want you to miss an upload. Okay y'all, so I am back fresh from a New York fashion week. I was sick for a little bit, but now I'm back and I'm here to answer all your questions. Today, I'm going to be doing my makeup with you all. This is the makeup that I pretty much wore while I was in New York and it held up in that heat wave. So we have to talk about all the things. This video is sponsored by Nordstrom and I picked up all of these products from Nordstrom. You guys know I love Nordstrom. Whether I'm purchasing my designer pieces to my everyday kind of contemporary, you know, pieces, shoes, even down to my beauty and my fragrances, I absolutely love Nordstrom. So it's always a privilege and an honor to work with brands that I use and love on an everyday basis and Nordstrom is one of those. So we will be getting into this makeup look but I will also be answering the questions that you guys had for me from New York Fashion Week. Um, I think it was like a huge surprise that I just popped up because I didn't do any prep videos or anything like that. Um, I kind of just showed up and was like hey y'all with a photo on Instagram. <laughs> So you guys had a lot of questions for me as far as like, why did I go? Um, how much was everything? Was I invited to shows? All that. So we're going to get into that. So if you guys are interested in hearing about my experience at New York Fashion Week and getting into this beat, hey, stick awesome. around. Okay, y'all. So let's go ahead and get started. I have been sick since I returned from New York and you may still be able to tell a little bit of my voice, but I'm feeling much better. Um, I can actually speak clearly. <laughs> Because at first, my throat was so tore up, I could barely even speak. Okay. Okay, y'all. So let's go ahead and get started with the base. And you guys know I only use two foundations usually, which is my Estee Lauder Double Wear and also my Charlotte Tilbury um, Airbrush Flawless Foundation. In the Double Wear, I am in shade Amber Honey. Perfect match for me. And also in the um, Charlotte Tilbury, I am 13 Neutral. They used to have a 13.5 that I felt was like spot on, but they've gotten rid of that shade. So sometimes I mix these two. What I will say is this. When it's hot, hot, hot weather, I love my double wear. This is an everyday foundation for me. You can apply it, you know, as light or as heavy as you would like. It is a full coverage foundation and it is a matte foundation, but it still looks skin like. The thing about this that I love, the Charlotte Tilbury, is that it um, gives an airbrush look. So sometimes when I want like a little bit more of a flawless feel, I will go for this or just mix the two. They both kind of operate the same. This one just gives like a little bit more of a smoothing effect, airbrush look, you know? So I'm gonna use this one today because we're not in New York anymore. I did interchange both of these throughout uh, my time there. I do apply directly to the skin and I use a dense brush. Okay, so I just pulled up the questions and a lot of these are just saying like, you guys are so proud of me and I killed it during fashion week. Thank you guys so much. Um, I did not realize that I would get this type of overwhelming response. Like even on the vlog, you guys were like seeing how proud of me you were and how you've been wanting me to go to fashion week, which I went to fashion week like over 10 years ago, 2012, I think one yeah, 2012, I went to Fashion Week. Um, but at the time, I was working with a lady and we were doing like interviews and stuff backstage. This was right before I started doing YouTube. This is when I was just a blogger. So I, at that time, I had been featured in a few different magazines like Teen Vogue, Seventeen Magazine, Red Book. Um, I think another one I can't remember. But yeah, so that's how I was able to get that opportunity, which was amazing. But that was my first time ever going to New York and y'all, I was so overwhelmed. Like I was like, oh my gosh, okay. And New York is an overwhelming city for me in general, just because it's so fast paced. I talk about that a lot in the vlog, but um, I love New York. Like I'm always inspired there, but I could never live there. That's another question that I received. Will you be moving to New York? Absolutely not. It's not in my ministry. Like I like to go there you know, like work or for fun. But I'm usually good off of like three to four days in New York, okay? Because I need a vacation after that visit. <laughs> so this is the base. You can see how flawless this looks. My camera does not have a filter on it. So yeah, this is 
real skin, real life. It's so good. Yeah, I just am so like grateful that you guys um, enjoyed me in that space and you want to see more of that. So yeah, that was a different response that I wasn't expecting, but I'm so grateful and I just... I'm just so grateful for the community that I've built with you guys. Next um, question, it says, are you joining Kensington Gray Agency? Um, no, I'm not. I actually don't have an agency. Um, an agency did reach out to me and we did like an interview and everything, but it didn't work out. So I manage myself and I've said this several times before and it's not like a bragging thing. It's more of like, this is just how it goes and I would like to explore more opportunities, but I've actually never pitched myself to a brand. I have, you know, researched it within the last year how to do that, but I usually don't pitch myself. So all of the opportunities and sponsorships that you guys see come my way, they have reached out to me first. And I think it's just through organic posting. And I love that for me, but I also would like to um, get more into pitching and kind of take this a little bit more serious, which was another reason why I did go to New York Fashion Week, just to test the waters. Next up, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply my concealer. I am in the market for a new concealer. You guys know I love a yellow concealer. Um, and it's really hard to find that tone that still has decent coverage. I'm thinking about trying the Double Wear Concealer. So let me know if you guys have had any um, experience with that one because as much as I love the foundation it's kind of odd that I've never tried the concealer and I like to let the concealer dry a little bit just to get a little bit more coverage I'm sure you guys already know that trick while I'm doing that let's go to the next question next question is would you do fashion week again what would you do differently I would definitely do fashion week again um, I think the only thing I would do differently is stick to my schedule and also go for a shorter amount of time so I went for nine days okay I was in New York from the 5th to the 13th and it had its perks, but it also had like its downside as well. So originally I was gonna go the 7th through the 13th when they dropped the fashion week dates. That's, you know, the dates I was like, okay, I'm gonna go that amount of time. And I originally went to fashion week. This was in the works like over a year ago. A friend of mine and I, we were gonna go together and kind of like get each other's content for each other, you know, just help out and have that kind of support. Um, things ended up kind of changing along the way. And it was a bit discouraging at first because I'm like, this is not really my thing. Like, what is my purpose in going to Fashion Week? Um, but when she was kind of talking me into it, how it would be great for both of us, I was like, you know what? You're right. I haven't been in so long. Let's do it. But as plans changed, I was just like, you know what? I'm about to cancel this trip. And it didn't. I didn't learn about this until probably... A little bit less than a month uh, before it was time to go so I was just like wow you know what I mean it was like annoying at the same time but I decided to put my big girl panties on and say you know what I'm gonna go and maybe this is just a blessing in disguise I will go by myself um, and just navigate my way through it on my own and not use anyone else as a crutch you know what I'm saying so it ended up being a blessing for me but um, that's the only thing I would do differently, but it had its perks because being there for so long, it allowed me to be invited to additional events. Um, so that was good. Also, I was invited to the PLT and Naomi Campbell fashion show. Now I knew I would be invited to that, um, prior to them really announcing it to the public because I have a contact with PLT. However, I did not know that, um, their fashion show would not be during the actual dates of fashion week, which is why I wasn't going on the 5th. But I reached out to Chi and I was just like, girl, what do you think? And she was like, you know what? I think you should definitely make that happen if you can. So I decided to add on a couple of dates and that's how I ended up being there for nine days, okay? <laughs> but yeah, it was a great decision. I was tired though. Next question is, Brittany, what other places, options to visit during fashion, New York Fashion Week and still feel a part of the glam? So let me go ahead and start blending this out. Um, the thing about Fashion Week is that, of course, you have your major shows by the heritage brands like your Fendi's and your um, Gucci, and, you know, the Louis Vuittons and all of that Dior. However, most 
influencers are not invited to those shows unless you are all the way at the top of the chain. And it's even harder for black women to be invited, black influencers. So there are so many other designers out there from your mid range to like the contemporaries, um, contemporary brands and stuff like that. So those are shows you can get invited to and also up and coming designers, which is a little bit more easy to get invited to. And the best way to get invited to shows or to learn about different shows is number one, get the fashion week schedule and also there will be shows that are not at spring studios which is like the main hub for fashion week shows but if you download the gps app it's literally called gps um you will be able to find out about so many different shows so many different presentations and parties and things like that and that is a great way to still be a part of the glam also a lot of influencers or um, people in the fashion space tend to have events during fashion week and they're not shows, right? So you can still go to those. So one of the ones was um, the fashion council. They had like a little showroom that you could attend where Fumi the label was a part of. Um, she's a designer. She does a lot of like beautiful knitwear. Also Hyatt Rida, she was there and she has her um, jewelry line. So they had a lot of different designers there. And then another like event that I went to was the Raisin Fashion event. That's where I met June Ambrose and Bruce Glenn for the first time. And that is a fundraiser event. So you had like a lot of designers there um, showcasing their pieces and you know of course those who donate and are in the fashion industry they were there so it was a lot of executives and stuff there which is really good if you are you know if you're bold enough to put yourself out there you can definitely find out who these people are and go up and introduce yourself on top of those type of events that are like invite only you do have events where you can just kind of show up to like that showroom or different parties and stuff like that is not as hard to get on the list. So absolutely. And even our meet and greet, you know, we had a meet and greet in Brooklyn with Michaela. It was myself, politics and fashion, uh, Cassandra from the Cassan edit. And also of course, Brown girl Chi. And you know, it wasn't, it was an invite event, but we weren't selling anything. It was just more so of a capacity thing. And we were, having something fashion related during fashion week where you can meet us shop and just have a good time so of course there are things you can do to still be, feel a part of you know the vibes and all of that um, but if you are looking to get into these major shows you can pay your way or you know work your way up <laughs> and getting invited to these heritage brands it takes knowing the right people and also having the right content but more importantly knowing the right people because i know several higher influencers that don't get invited to those big shows like that so also another thing that i noticed when i signed up on gps and i started saying yes to a few different events i started receiving more and more invites to shows so that is i don't know if they just see you and they're like, oh, she wants to go to this, let her go to this, you know. So I missed two fashion shows that I really should have went to. It was Tiffany Brown and I forgot the other name of the designer, but they had some really good pieces. Y'all, I was just exhausted and done uh, by that time. But I really wish I would have stuck to my schedule and went to those shows. And next time I'll know a little bit more on how to prioritize. But yeah, things started to come up as I was there, you know, so I decided to go to certain events instead of shows. Oh. Now let's set the under eye. So I did pick up a new product. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, um, makeup brands. And this is the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. Now, of course, in New York, I was baking. And of course, I used my um, Laura Mercier, which is just translucent. I don't even use translucent honey, but this one is in tan deep, but it's pretty light, even though I think it blends in really well. I'm gonna come closer so you guys can see. I think that looks really good. And this is the packaging. It's really nice. Next, will you do spring fashion week? Also, I too don't like outlets. Do you recommend Woodbury Commons? So while I was there, um, I did go to Woodbury Commons, which is an outlet. Tashira let me know about this and she was like, sis, you have to go. Um, and it was amazing. I wish I had more time, but I didn't. And it's about, I would say like an hour away from the city because I was staying in Soho. So it was about an hour away, but they had everything. Bottega, Celine, Givenchy, Saint Laurent, um, Loewe, Marnie, uh, Dior, Prada. They had everything. I did not get to go to Bottega or Celine and a huge, huge, 
huge regret, but they had some really good deals. I did buy a couple of things, not a lot, but, um, oh, Fendi. Yeah, they had a few things there. The good thing about the outlets, though, is that you can get a contact and you can call them, see what they have, and they will ship the stuff to you. So you don't always have to be there. If you have a contact, they don't mind sending you photos and stuff like that. But um, highly recommend that outlet. It was a really good outlet and it wasn't just stuff made for the outlets which i cannot stand i hate going to outlets where you can tell they make things specifically for the outlet and it never really came out um gucci was there and they had some really nice things in there as well i'm gonna go ahead and start on my eyes this is my favorite palette of the moment this is the charlotte tilbury um instant eye palette smoky eyes are forever and i love it y'all these colors are gorgeous now am i going to participate in spring fashion week no not this year but i think that spring fashion week is probably a little bit more chill and more relaxed so that probably would have been a good first fashion week to go to um, and I've heard that as well from other influencers that go to all the fashion week. They say that they really enjoy spring fashion week more because it's just less chaos. Um, but, you know, fall, autumn, winter fashion week is always going to be the best experience as far as opportunity. You know what I mean? To go to like bigger things, I think. But um, yeah, I will not be doing that this year because... Well, so far, I don't have any plans to do it this year. My birthday is coming up within the next couple of weeks, so I'm going to go out of town. And then I think I need to just focus on, you know, creating good content and maybe gear up for next year's fashion week. And maybe I'll do two. I don't know yet because it can get expensive. And I think somebody did ask me that question, like as far as price. So we will definitely talk about that. The next question is, how could a non-influencer get into shows? And like I mentioned, you need to sign up for GPS. That is the app that host and list all the shows for you. Also, it's about who you know, because Monroe and she were a great resource for me. Um, Monroe would send me over things and I was so grateful for that. Did I go to all of it? No, but it's nice to be able to have someone who, you know, wants to see you succeed and also is just generous with their knowledge. And Monroe is a great resource. And I think she has been for so many different influencers. Also my girl, Chi, like, you know, I was hanging with her most of my time in New York. And though Oh, she didn't invite me to any shows per se she's definitely well connected as well so it was just really nice to um have them in my corner and them be willing to share information so this is the color that i'm doing i'm going for a bronzy look because i am wearing that bronze tube top that i wore in the vlog i need to wear that again i loved it it looks so good on my skin tone. So the makeup is going to kind of complement that. You know what? I'm not good at multitasking. I'm learning because can I read and apply makeup at the same time? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but also as far as getting into shows, you can pay your way. I've heard like the blondes. I don't know if I should be saying this. But the blondes had a fashion show and you could buy the tickets like but they're very expensive. I wouldn't go that route. I would just wait on my turn because here's the thing. What is the point? And I want to talk about this for a second when it comes to shows and also some of the reasons why I skipped out on some of the shows. So the reason to go to Fashion Week for me was number one, to get my feet wet, kind of scope out the scene, also to be inspired um, because I have been so uninspired as far as content creation, just the internet space in general. Um, for a minute. Life has been lifing in a good way, but also in a challenging way. And so um, I have just been focused on other things other than this, you know, and that is one of the reasons why I wanted to put myself out there. Also, I was kind of forced to do so. Like I said, a friend, um, we were supposed to do this together and it ended up kind of just being me. And I'm grateful for that. Also, um, I feel like New York Fashion Week is the content creators like convention of the year. So this is the time where, you know, we build all these relationships with our different friends and stuff on the internet, but this is the time where everybody is kind of in one spot. So you really get to connect and see these people in person that you may have like the closest relationship online with. That is one of the top reasons in my opinion. And for me, that was one of my main goals. Um, it's about community for me. And also you need to know your why. 
I've told you guys, I know that my purpose in this life, in this space is to inspire women that look like me or feel like they don't belong or, um, you know, are larger or whatever have you, um, just to show you that you can do this. And even when you have a regular life, you know, I have a regular, I'm a regular black girl. I'm just a girl. Okay. I'm just a girl, regular black girl out here, you know, just working to create the life that I want to live my dream life. And, um, I have been afforded so many opportunities and just so many blessings along the way. And so going to fashion week, I think and showing that really can inspire people who view my content. And it shows you that you don't have to look like that influencer or this model or whatever. You can just be a girl, honey, and go, you know what I mean? And still do the things and still be a part of the girlies, like all of that. So that was my main reason. And I achieved my goal. Now, of course, I had shows lined up. I also had a partnership lined up um, and meetings lined up. So that was another reason for me to go. That was like the work part for me. Um, and I ended up, you know, doing more events than I did shows because I was just exhausted. But next time I will stick to my schedule. Like I said, um, the events were amazing. I love events more simply because you get to interact with each other. The shows, I mean, you kind of do and they have great after parties and it's a nice like accolade. You know what I mean? Like I went to fashion week and I sat front row and I attended the show or even standing up. Now, some of these bigger shows, you may get a seat there, but you're going to be standing and who wants to do that? So the reason to go to some of these shows is number one, if you want to grow your content, if you want to grow your presence online is to get press. Okay. Press is what will catapult your career as an influencer, as a content creator. So when they have press out there and you are in the right place at the right time, you can literally just take off within that week, you know? And a lot of people just go out to spring studios. They walk the streets. They're not invited to any shows. They get their picture taken. Next thing you know, they're all over Pinterest, all over uh, Instagram on like some of the bigger publications. And that is something that um, as a content creator and an influencer, it's nice to have behind your name. You may end up being in magazines like Essence or Vogue or all of these, you know, publications. So that is really good. Now for me, there were a couple of shows that I was invited to that I knew that I really wouldn't get press. Um, and I was already exhausted. And I knew that I'm one of those people that I can get overwhelmed or overstimulated, right? So I was already doing so many things and going to those shows and putting on that face to like really put myself out there and kind of bogarting my way to get my photo. Um, it just was not something that I was interested in doing. So that's why I kind of skipped out. But more importantly, I was just tired. But getting that press it's going to catapult your career. If you are serious about this, that's kind of how you have to be. You have to have that go-getter mentality. And I'm a person like I really enjoy being in the spaces where I am appreciated and wanted. Um, and I'm just not a bogarter. I am not that. Nothing's wrong with that. Um, I am a go-getter. I'm a hard worker, but I'm never going to bogart my way. And there was a couple of events that I was invited to that I was just like, you know what? I know that I don't really, I'm not really wanted in that space. So I'm not going to do it. Hello. But yeah, that's like the thing about fashion week. Being in the right place at the right time can really change your entire career and can catapult that. And I will say even me being there for that time, um, a black designer decided they wanted to send me a handbag. They sent it over to my hotel. It's a niece. I will insert a picture here. And the bag is super cute. Like just by me being there, I had never heard of this brand before. I've also gotten on PR list just for being there. I'm assuming just hashtagging you know, New York fashion week. Um, Andrea Imaya, they sent me over some pieces. Um, 
Who else? Sammy B. That's how I was able to get her show. And she dressed me for that show. So, you know, super grateful just by being in the space. I was blessed, you know, go ahead and contour real quick. And then I'll finish up the eyes with liner. We are going to do a lash today. The next question was, hey, Brittany, I was so happy to see you at New York Fashion Week because you are that girl. Thank you. Um, why did you choose to go? I kind of just, you know, explained that a little bit more about the camaraderie of it, the community. Um, also to get out of my own comfort zone, to be inspired and to get my feet wet, to kind of see what it's really about these days and how I can elevate my content and elevate my presence in this space. Next question is, where did you shop for your looks for New York Fashion Week? So here's another thing, okay? Let's touch on it because a lot of people don't talk about this. So people get stylists and stuff like that. And I was like, kind of thinking about doing that because here's my thing. I am very like, I have a uniform, you know, I have a comfortability when it comes to clothes. Um, I feel like I dress the same all the time. And so where is my eyeliner, please? <laughs> I actually went as far um, as to reaching out to a stylist and having them kind of curate some looks. And let me just tell you something. They created a couple looks for me. Um, it was $150 a look. And that was $300 down the drain because I did not wear anything that that person put together for me. And it was just another, it was just a $300 lesson to like, you belong in this space. You are good enough. Um, you have a platform for a reason and go with your gut and your intuition because here's the thing. I am that. <laughs> Like I put together clothes for me that I feel comfortable in. And that's exactly what I ended up doing. I didn't wear any of those, well, the looks or whatever that I paid for. Um, and I just shopped my closet. Hello. I shopped my own closet. A lot of the stuff that I wore was not brand new. So yeah, I really just sat down and curated my own looks and shopped my closet because here's the thing. I live in Nashville and though I wear what I want to wear, I don't care if it seems over the top even though I never think it is. I still haven't found my eyeliner. Oh, here it is. Even though I never think it is, it's one of those things like, this is the time to pull out your things, you know? So I was like, let me just pull out my thing. And when I got into that groove, it was just like, why didn't I do this at the beginning? Hello. Once I got together like some main pieces that I wanted to wear, of course, I would go and shop for a few accessories um, if need be. And I was happy with everything I wore. I was comfortable like physically comfortable and comfortable, like as far as like confident, you know, in everything that I wore. And that is the key. Having somebody put something on me is just no. OK. And I'm not saying I would never go with the stylist to elevate my style in the future. But that one was not a good fit. And like I said, a three hundred dollar lesson. OK. OK, y'all. So I'm back. I've applied a little bit of eyeliner. I kind of just wanted to get my wing together because once I do my lashes, I will, you know, fill in what needs to be filled in. Um, and now we are going to go into the blush. And this is a new one, y'all. You can pick this up from Nordstrom as well. This is the Dior Rosy Glow um, Blush. And you guys know this has been viral all over. Um, everybody gets the pink one. I decided to go for an orange shade. So let's see how this looks because it's supposed to kind of warm up to your skin. So I think it's like a different color on everyone. But I'm excited to try this out. The shade that I have is in Cherry. Did she give me the wrong one? Oh, she didn't. So this is in Cherry, which is very interesting because this is definitely orange. Okay. <laughs> the next question is, how expensive is it to attend Fashion Week? And y'all, this is a big one, okay? Because it can get very expensive. This is how it looks. Hmm. I can go in, huh? It's not very strong. Well, oh, that's pretty. So yeah, okay. I will tell you what I paid and I will also tell you how it can be less expensive if you have your priorities in order. <laughs> I stayed at the public hotel and I paid over $3,000 to stay at the public hotel. And you guys know hotels in New York are tiny. Hello. But I definitely wanted to be in Soho because I felt like that was the best place to be um, for Fashion Week. 
I don't regret it because I ended up going to a few different um, events at my actual hotel. They had a lot going on there. And a good thing about it is like even when you're asleep at night, you don't hear. I was on the 13th floor, so you don't hear anything downstairs because it is rowdy at that hotel. OK, because they have so many events. We have a rooftop and everything. I didn't hear any music or anything. It didn't keep me up at night. But if you are looking to get away from like the crowd, that one I would not recommend. But yeah, that hotel ended up being about $3,000 from the 7th through the 13th, um, which I think is a pretty decent deal. Of course, prices are higher during fashion week. And then also um, I got a couple days at another hotel, which was in the financial district. I don't know how much that was. I didn't pay for that. But um that was an additional cost. Okay. So going for nine days can get very, very, very expensive. I think it was maybe like three or $400 a night at that other hotel. So that is the lodging can be very expensive. Let's talk about the Ubers. Okay. I am a Nashville girly. Yes. I have rode the subway before I took the subway while I was there, but not to events. Okay. Uber charges were crazy. We're talking no less than $20 to get down the street. And one of the highest ones was $99. Okay. And that was the day that I went to the Sammy B show and it was raining outside and it was horrible. $99 one way. Okay. So I Ubered every single place that I went, unless it was like, you know, in that vicinity because I'm wearing heels. I don't want to be hot. And it was a heat wave. I didn't want to be hot and sweating on my way to the events. I just, I'm going to pay for convenience. I have not looked at my tab for Uber during that time because I don't want to torture myself. But let me just tell you, um, I probably caught at least four Ubers a day. Um, with the lowest being $20 and the highest being $99 one way. Okay. So that is going to add up. I'm sure I spent about a thousand dollars or more in Ubers. Um, but that is my choice. Of course you can do subways and all the things that's just way too much going on for me. Um, no. Okay. It's just a no for me. And also because New York is so fast paced to me, when I was in my Uber, I found that that was the only time I was able to kind of decompress and have a thought to myself. And so I really enjoyed that, but very, very, very expensive. The foundation though, very good. <laughs> Now it's time to go in with the setting spray. So I did use this while I was in New York and this is like new for my routine because I don't usually set my foundation and I've used this before in the past, but um, you guys know the combo of this and the one size has been viral and it like <laughs> keeps the makeup on. I would have to agree because my girl Cassandra at the meet and greet had both and I wore it and my makeup was still looking good even though it was still burning the heck up. Because it was a heat wave, you absolutely needed a setting spray, okay? So that is, like I said, one thing that I had to do while I was there. It set my makeup. Also, when this dries, I did set like my smile lines and stuff with a powder. Something else that I don't usually do. But again, it was 100 degrees, so it was important to do so. So once this dry a little bit, I will do that. Um, also, more expenses. You have to eat. So every single day, of course, you're eating out, you're door dashing. And one thing I noticed, I barely ate in New York because I was just tired, you know? So it's just like, by the time you finish all the things, you're just getting Uber Eats or DoorDash to your room, um, which adds up. So yeah, okay. But yeah, you have to eat every single day. I would say those are the main expenses is your lodging, how you're going to get from point A to point B and eating. Now, the way to cut down costs on this is to have campaigns going on during the time of New York Fashion Week. Um, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but Monroe is huge with this. I love it. Um, she always has something going on during Fashion Week and she's getting paid to actually be there in a way. She may not be getting paid, and I don't know this specifically, but you may not get paid to go to a show, which that is a thing when you have, you know, when you're top tier, they pay you to go to these shows um, just for coverage and stuff like that. But she may not be getting paid to go to these shows, but she is doing campaigns while she's getting ready or get dressed with me with this brand or a skincare routine. I know Janae did a campaign with Soldier 
Sol de Janeiro <laughs> while she was there. So that's how you kind of compensate um, and recoup your costs. And I had a campaign as well during that time um, that kind of recouped my costs. However, I kind of mentioned a brand, so I have to refilm that. <laughs> um, but that's how you can kind of recoup those costs. Okay, so this is kind of dry. But yeah, working during fashion week can kind of be fun, especially if you're doing reels and stuff like that. And it's a good selling point to a lot of these brands because you can be like, hey, I can do a get ready with me, um, you know, for fashion week. And that could be like your selling point to the brands. So that is a way to like really recoup those costs. Um and I highly recommend, you know, if you are at that level to do so, because like I said, this can definitely be a huge expense, but it is something that I consider to be an investment. And if you are a content creator filing taxes and stuff, you can write this stuff off. Okay, y'all. So I also am going to go in with my Anastasia brow gel. You guys know I love this. Set the brows. And I'm in need of a thread really bad. So I definitely want to keep these in place. And when it was hot in New York, this was important because I have really straight brows so they can kind of fall a little bit. And I like them to, you know, look bold and like up. Not necessarily the um, laminated look, but just like this. <laughs> Another kind of newer product that I was using in New York is the YSL Lash Clash. Love this mascara. Honey. It, um, it has a juicy <laughs> applicator. I'm used to, I have been using lately, more of the plastic applicator. This one is actually a brush, so, or a bristle brush. And I would say it's nice. It's really dark that I, and I love that, but I do wear lashes, you know, of course, if I'm gonna be taking pictures and stuff. So yeah. Oh, also another reason that I went to New York Fashion Week was to actually get some professional pictures, okay? I don't know if y'all know this, but I've literally never had professional pictures like on any of my platforms the last professional photos i took was like college graduation you know what i mean like olin mills type stuff all of my photos are usually taken on my phone um or even with my camera but like my little sister's doing it she's not a photographer by any means so yeah i've never had an actual photographer um shoot me before and so i hired my friend rich and he is a professional photographer like he has press, you know, he has accolades. He's in publications and all of that. Um, and I hired him and he came and took the content for me. So that was another reason I wanted to kind of get my feet wet in that area as well, because, and I don't know if y'all know this, but I really hate taking photos. So um, that was another way that, you know, I was able to get comfortable. And of course, when you're like taking pictures with a stranger, like if I was to hire just a, a outside photographer, how comfortable I was even uncomfortable with him doing it because it's just not, you know, like my everyday type of thing with me and my little sister is different. Like I don't have to worry. We just keep, 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 keep on going until we get the shot. When somebody is on the clock, child, listen, okay. They get what they get. And then you just kind of look through and find some good photos. So that was, you know, nice to get that experience. But um, yeah, and I feel like the pictures came out well. I do like the look of the professional photography and I would like to get more into that and have like somebody on the team that I can shoot with a little bit more regularly. So yeah. Okay, y'all, so this is what the face is looking like so far. What are we thinking? I'm loving the under eye. It's bright, but not too bright. I'm also loving the blush. It looks really good with the contour. So yeah, and of course the base is key. Okay, and it looks so good. So my face feels good. This um does kind of give you a little bit of a, Feeling, but not nearly as much as the one size. So this is good for just like regular heat. Um, but again, it was like a hundred and something degrees in New York. So honey, you need both. Okay y'all, so I'm gonna go ahead and go apply my lashes and kind of fix my hair up a little bit and I'll come back and finish answering the rest of the questions. Okay y'all, so I'm back. I have my lashes applied. My top is on. I'm gonna put on one of the pieces that I got. That was another question like, what all did you buy? And I bought this piece and another piece from the Dylan Lex event. Let's see how this looks. This is called Gilded and something. I can't remember the name, but I thought it was so cute and it comes layered like this already. So I definitely wanted a piece that, um, you know, I didn't have to buy multiple pieces in order to layer it, but also something that I can wear 
like on a regular basis in my wardrobe. And I think this would be cute just like with a white button down or whatever have you. So I thought this was like the best option for me. Love that it gives like a little choker moment. And I don't have like any really like ornate gold uh, chokers except my love choker. So yeah, this is something different and cute. Now I have another new product here. This is the Lip Cheat by Charlotte Tilbury in the Foxy Brown. You guys know I love me a brown lip liner. Of course I lost one of my brown lip liners while I was in New York. <laughs> So I'm excited to try this one because I've heard a lot of great things about this one. So let's see how this applies. Okay, I like this. I feel like this is a mixture between cork and um, chestnut by MAC. So just like an in-between kind of brown, not super, super, super dark, which I like. Let me go ahead and answer another question while we're at it. Do you plan on attending Paris Fashion Week? No, um, not this year. Uh, I need to get you know my feet a little bit more wet before I start traveling out of the country for fashion week. I did talk about this back when we were talking about going to New York fashion week, like how I would love to go to Paris because you guys know I never got a chance to go to Paris when I was supposed to go. COVID happened and my whole entire trip was canceled and I still haven't uh, planned another trip out there. So for my lip today, of course, we have another Charlotte Tilbury uh, <laughs> moment. You guys know I love me some Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Nude Romance. And I just love these lip colors by Charlotte. This is from the Kissing Falling from the Lipstick Tree collection. And these are refillable. I love these. I have two other colors in this. It's just like a really pretty nude. Mm, I think this is a really good nude for fall and winter. That's beautiful. I'm gonna go back over it with the lip cheek. How cute. Okay, next question. How different was it for you walking everywhere? I didn't really walk everywhere. Like I told y'all, I did get an Uber most of the places because I was wearing heels and I'm a heel girl, but of course we don't have to like walk blocks and blocks and blocks to get where we're going. This is a, I live in a driving city, you know, so we drive everywhere. We pull up and park close or either, you know, a valet. So it's very different in New York. Um, but I didn't really walk too, too, too many places. The days that I did get up and walk, I enjoyed it because you get, there's something on every single corner, coffee shop, shopping, whatever have you. So the mornings where I did get up, I didn't vlog as much. Um, so I would get up in the morning, kind of go for a coffee, um, maybe do a little shopping. And those days I just wore sneakers. So I enjoy the walkable city. It's just, when I have somewhere to be and to look cute for, that's just, it's not in my ministry. <laughs> the next question is, how did you prepare? So the only thing I did to prepare was um, I reached out to a few of my friends and then also I signed up on the GPS site. I also reached out to a lot of brands that I actually work with and just to see if they were doing anything during fashion week, letting them know that I'd be there and would love to be a part of whatever. So that was a good, that was another way that I prepared. And also just, um, you know, just getting my clothes and fits and stuff together. Um, but a lot of the stuff ended up being kind of last minute for me. Next question, what is one of your greatest memories or takeaways from New York Fashion Week? Oh, that's a good one. Let me go ahead and apply this gloss though. This is the Dior Attic Lip Maximizer. I've never tried their lip maximizers um, and I'm interested. Now this one is in the shade Rosewood and I love the Dior Lip Oil in Rosewood. I feel like it is the perfect like beautiful lip color for me. Um, and I wear that when I don't wear makeup because when I don't wear makeup, it's really difficult to wear like a gloss other than something clear. Rosewood is the perfect like bitten lip color for me. I just love it. Um, so this is the Rosewood in the Maximizer and I'm excited to see how this looks. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is good. Only thing I do wish is that the doe foot applicator was the same as the lip oil because I love how juicy and fat it is. <laughs> I do feel a little bit of tingling, kind of like a minty, not like tingling like some of the other brands that like hurt your lips. So it could be because I have the lipstick on as well underneath, but I'm loving this. Beautiful. I feel like it goes super well with the bronzy vibe, don't you think? 
love. Now, back to the question, a takeaway and like best memories. So one of the best memories I would say was the Dylan Lex event where I was able to just meet so many people at the same time. Um, Janae was there. Of course, Chi was there. Um, Carolyn Gray, of course, it was her event. It was just such good vibes. Like Carolyn Girl, you really brought the vibes for that event. Everybody there was so warm, so nice. Um, who else did I meet? I met Kayla Walker. Um, I met Iconic Ash. Love her. Um, I met Simply Shayna. Um, a few others. Like, I just enjoyed that event so much. Shopping, champs, you know, and just good vibes. Um, another good memory was of course dinner with all the girls that Monroe hosted enjoyed that because it was just a good kiki a good chat um where I was able to meet the Yusufs for the first time in person I love them so much we've been following each other for a very long time and I just love I love stay high and I we talk a lot via dm so it was so good to meet her finally in person um Monica so many of the girls all the girls were there you guys saw it in the vlog um, a takeaway was just be present, you know, by me showing up and being present and not getting in my own way. I was able to make so many great connections. Another show that I forgot to mention was the Bruce Glenn show. Now I met Bruce Glenn at the Raisin Fashion event. Then I also met them again, um, on my last night there at the Sammy B show. And they were like, yeah, just come to the show tomorrow. The thing was, is I was leaving the next day and I'm like, Ooh, I've already been here nine days. Is it worth like you know, pushing back my flight to attend the show because that's a big show, you know? Um, but I think it was just time for me to go home at that point. You know, it was just time to go home, but just by me being present and showing up and being myself, you know, I was able to have a conversation with them on a Wednesday and by Tuesday night, they were asking me to come to their show the next Wednesday. So you know what I mean? Like that right there is just one of the best takeaways. Um, just being in the space, being yourself, um, having good energy and all of that, things will come to you. I just didn't seize the moment. I don't regret it because it was time for me to come home. I was depleted by that point, but um, it was nice to meet them. You guys saw the pictures that we took like at the Sammy B show, like we were dancing and everything together. So they were super cool. Love that. Um, Another takeaway was, you know, you belong in the space. Not that I ever didn't think I belonged. I just didn't see the benefit. Um, I was like, what would be the point of me going? Now I can understand that. Like, you know what I mean? I was able to kind of see how things work, kind of get my feet wet. And um, I enjoyed myself immensely, like, you know what I mean? And was able to make some good business connections. Like I said, different brands, you know, reaching out to gift product and maybe work together in the future um, and just getting my face out there. I've gained about 900 uh, followers on Instagram since then. And that was just last week. So you know, that's enough growth for me. You know, I'm just, I'm grateful for that. Another question was, oh, loved all your looks during fashion week. Um, did you buy anything? So yes, I did buy this. Like I said, I bought another piece from Dylan Lex. I bought two pair of shoes, Loewe, Marnie. Um, I bought some Fendi sunglasses. Like I said, I didn't have the time that I really wanted out there because I had somewhere to be. Um, but I would definitely go back again and I'll be calling up the essays. Um, can us regular folks go Brit or is it invite only? Um, yes and no. I feel like, if, yes, anybody can go to fashion week. You can just show up, be in that space. Um, some things are invite only, but a lot of things you can just show up to, or just by being in the space, looking good enough. You never know. You know, you never know. My girl Tashira has an amazing story testimony on her TikTok um, where she was able to meet Kelly Catrone just by being in the right space at the right time and extending a hand and a hello. And she was whisked away for the rest of the day into a photo shoot, into Anna Delvey's apartment, all the things, you know what I mean? So just by being her was enough. And no, she was not invited previous to that, but that is just an opportunity that came to her while she was in the right space at the right time. So absolutely, but have a goal. And when you are approached, because you can just be looking good, 
when you're approached, have something to offer. You know what I'm saying? So of course, Tashira has so much to offer. She is a content creator. She's super smart. Um, you know, she has the gift of gab. That's why me and her connected that witty gift of gab that she has is like, that's my cousin. So love. Um, but yeah, anybody can go. Um, some things are invite only, but you never know. You may get invited and you may just show up and be at the right place at the right time. No question. I just love yours and Rich's relationship. He seems like a genuine guy. Um, let's see. Will you attend New York Fashion Week again? What didn't you like? Yes, I will attend New York Fashion Week again. Um, the only thing I did not, well, there was nothing that I didn't like. I had an amazing experience, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't think there was anything I didn't like. What left it? Nothing left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, yeah, nothing. I enjoyed every single aspect and would definitely go again. I hadn't thought about that, you know? I hadn't thought about that, but I'm like, yeah, I didn't have any bad experiences. Next question. Did you book your own flight and hotel or did the brand take care of it? I booked my own flight and hotel. Um, the brand did not take care of it, but you can get sponsorships or, you know, free stays with hotels. I just waited to the last minute in order to reach out. But you guys know, if you follow me on Instagram, I have worked with the W hotel before I've worked with, um, the Kempton hotels and so on and so forth. So that is definitely something that I will look into and get a head start on for next time. Did you have an itinerary prior to, or did you figure out everything once you got to New York? So I definitely had an itinerary prior to, I had, you know, the PLT thing, my first night and the uh, after party. The next day I knew I was doing the Rowan Blazers and Target event and also the um, Raisin Fashion event with Chi. Um, what else did I have planned? I had Sammy B planned. I had um, the dinner with Monroe planned. I had a sponsorship planned. Um, I had a meeting with a brand planned. So that was kind of like my itinerary. All the other things was just as I got there, you know? So yeah, both. What's the best hotels to stay in for New York Fashion Week? So I can't really say that. I do feel like it depends on your vibe. The public was great for a person like me that's not going to go out and search for fun times. And there was all the fun times at my hotel. <laughs> but um, I learned from even Tashira and Janae after I booked it, they were like, girl, no. Because here's the thing with the public. I enjoyed it but I'm just used to something a little bit different, okay? Um, when I got there, there was no bellman. I had three luggage, three pieces of luggage. Um, needed help. You know, I'm over here, I'm Ubering there. So it's like when I got there, I had to go find a cart. They don't even have them on the first floor. You have to go upstairs to the, the closet and get a cart, take it all the way back downstairs, come all the way back out to my Uber. Like my Uber was waiting at least, eight to 10 minutes because it's kind of like self-help. They have self-check-in, self-check-out. Um, it's just, I'm used to just a little bit more like service. Um, and I did not receive that, but it was still nice. Like I love that they come and they clean the room every single day. They're very helpful once you do get a hold of someone, but nobody's there to bring your bags in, get you settled, you know, readily available like that. So I was told the Conrad is really nice because the rooms are larger and it's kind of away from everything. Also Hotel 11 or 11 Hotel, I believe is another one that's really good. Um, those are the only other two that I really heard about. So I need to do more research for myself next time, but I'll probably stay at the Conrad the next time because the rooms are super nice. Okay, next question is, what do you do to get your street photo taken by the photographers? You just have to be there. You just have to show up, like go to the, where the shows are. Of course, they're gonna be looking for certain people that, you know, names ring a bell, like the bigger influencers. But even if you're in the right space and you have on a cute outfit or you kind of link up with somebody real quick, you can get those slow-mo uh, videos. You can get your photo taken. And next thing you know, you're in these huge publications. So just being at the right place at the right time. Most all shows do have press as well. So, you know, they go through all those photos and they choose the ones that are getting pushed out. But yeah, that's how you do it. It's really no huge science behind it. I don't think 
And if there is, I haven't figured it out yet. But I didn't even go to Spring Studios, y'all, because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. Oh, that was another show, Sergio Hudson. Could have gotten into Sergio Hudson. That wasn't a show that I had planned. So I had had dinner plans already. And then we had left one show. I forgot where we were. But anyway, we left one place and everybody was going to go to the Sergio Hudson show. But I'm like, I have dinner plans, so I'm going to skip out. I'm already tired. It's been a long day. And then uh, my friend Rich ended up going and he was like, girl, you need to get down here right now. Everybody's here. Sergio Hudson, like, we can get in. Da, da, da. I'm like, listen, I'm already at dinner. I just ordered my food. So I wasn't going to get up and move. And I'm not, I don't regret that. Of course, Sergio Hudson is a huge show, huge opportunity. So stay ready so you don't have to get ready. But also I knew my limitations and I would not have been on, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have been my happy chipper self because I had already had plans to wind down, you know what I mean? So yeah, that was another like kind of impromptu thing that happened that was huge. Um, they have the date set for September 2024, New York Fashion Week. I'm not sure yet. I need to look into that. Just want to say that you are gorgeous and seem like a kind person. Greetings from Nairobi. Hello, Nairobi. Thank you so much. I saw mostly influencers at New York Fashion Week this year instead of celebrities. Did you see a shift? Well, I haven't been in over 10 years, so I can't say that I saw a shift. But there is space, I think, for everyone. Um, there were definitely celebrities there um, at the bigger shows, you know. But I just feel like New York Fashion Week is to push out the newest things, like the newest clothing pieces, trends, and all of that. So influencers are, and I think should be welcome in that space. I understand like people feel like it's getting diluted and all of that. Listen, we are the marketing team for most of these brands, even if we're not hired, okay? Um, people look to real people to push this stuff out. So of course you're going to have you know, the bigger publications pushing out these trends. But a lot of people follow influencers. This is the world of influencing um, content creation. So we belong in that space and we have, I think, a presence and it's needed. And I don't know if it's welcome, but we're busting down the doors. <laughs> I did see a few celebrities, though. Mimi Leakes was there, Tiana Taylor, Lala. Um... Who else? It was a few, d depending on where you were. I, of course, I didn't go to any of the huge shows, but at the POT event, that's where I saw most celebrities. So last but not least, you know, we cannot end the video or me go out this house without a fragrance. And y'all, this fragrance that I want to show y'all is an oldie but a goodie, but it's been reformulated. And let me tell you how good this thing is. I actually picked this up in store, y'all. This is the Chance Chanel Eau Fresh, but it's the Eau de Parfum. All these years, they had just the Eau de Toilette in this. And this used to be one of my signature scents when I was in college. So I smelled this a couple weeks back and maybe a month ago, actually, when I picked up another Chanel fragrance. And I was like, what is that smell? It smells so good. They were like, oh, this is the uh, Chanel Eau Fresh. And I'm like, oh, I used to wear that. They were like, no, it's a little bit different. It's the Eau de Parfum and it smells a little bit different. And I was so attracted to it, but I was like, I'm not buying that again. I wore that in college. Y'all, I went to Nordstrom again. And this girl that was helping me had this on. I was like, what, did, what do you have on? She said it was this. I put it on. Oh my goodness, y'all. The scent. It's okay. So this is like an aquatic scent. Let me take it out the box. I'm just talking about it. I got the smaller one because again, it took me so long to just finally bite the bullet. But this is what it looks like. This is the Chanel Chance Eau Fresh. Love, 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 love. I'm gonna look up the notes on this for you guys. And... We're going to get into it. Okay, y'all. So this is considered to be a fresh citrus fragrance. It has citron, jasmine, and teak wood. It is a woody, floral, sparkling expression of chance, a surge of energy and vitality. The fragrance sweeps you into a whirlwind of invigorating intensity, a chance encounter. 100%. 100%. This is not like the original, okay? It smells similar, but what it does on the dry down what it does on the drive down, okay? It says the scent opens with the zesty freshness of a citron accord, then unveils a round and luminous jasmine heart. The vibrant presence of a teakwood note, deep and ambery leaves a lingering trail. They're not lying, y'all. So I need to go ahead and apply this. Oh my gosh, like the compliments that you will receive on this. Oh, 
top tier. The smell, the smell. Y'all, so I put this on right. And like I said, it took me a minute. I just kept smelling. I'm like, this smells so good. But it took me a minute to say I want to bite the bullet and purchase it. So I put it on my wrist, walked around a little bit. Let me tell you something. I went into Celine. I went into Chanel. And I went into Gucci. I was stopped each and every single time. The guy in Celine really did it for me, though, because he was like, what are you wearing? He was taking my name down because there's some sunglasses that I wanted. And he was taking my name down and he was like, what are you wearing? And I was like, right. OK, so you're giving me the seal of approval. I said, it's Chanel Chance. And he was like, wow, I'm really particular about fragrance. And I love Celine fragrances. And if you know anything about Celine fragrances, they're very rich. Um, and just good. So when he stopped me and said something, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back and get this. I had to go back to Nordstrom and pick this up, y'all. The trail, the scent trail that this leaves, it is so nice. It's definitely good for summer, but I think it could be good for transitioning weather as well because it dries down a lot more woody and sweet than I remember this to be. To me, this used to be very aquatic and citrusy. I still get that burst at the beginning, but the dry down is very sexy, y'all. I love this so much. And I just was like, is it going to give too young? Is it going to give like, you know, I like to smell expensive, honey, but good. Please. Just go out and get it. It's so good. I can't believe I've come back around to this. Like, uh, I'm obsessed. Anyway, y'all, uh, one last time, let's get into this face, girl. So this was my New York face in particular when I went to Bad Roman and had dinner with my girl, Gabby. And I just loved how I looked most of the time while in New York. I feel like my makeup was really good in New York. And it probably is because... I was actually setting it and using powders and things like that. So let me know what y'all think about the makeup. Do you think it looks different? I feel like it just looks a little bit more polished, but it could just be me, you know? And I know this makeup is going to last, like it's not even a hundred degrees here anymore, but if I need it to last in 100 degree weather, I know for a fact that these products will. So make sure y'all check out Nordstrom for all of the products that I used here today. And thank you again, Nordstrom, for sponsoring this video. And y'all, I want to thank y'all so much for your support. I am so grateful for the space that I have created. And I say this ever so often, but it's times like this when I'm being placed in a space or putting myself in a space where you may view bigger content creators other than myself and I fit right in, right? And you guys are letting me know, like, girl, you fit in perfectly. Love seeing you at New York Fashion Week. Um, you know, just really being super supportive and it motivates me. It makes me want to do better and give you guys better content. And I needed that. I needed that push. I needed that camaraderie. I needed to be in a space where people do what I do because I don't live in that space at home. I live a regular everyday life. Like I said, honey, I'm just a girl. Okay. I'm just a girl. And, um, I needed that. So I would definitely go back and I definitely do want to uh, check out Spring Fashion Week. Definitely would like to go to Paris Fashion Week one of these days, maybe Milan. You never know. But I'll definitely be doing one of the Fashion Weeks next year. Um, and I'm just so grateful and I appreciate your support so much. But yeah, check out that description box. Everything that I use today on my face will be linked. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you on my next one. Bye, y'all.